In this lesson, we're going to discuss geometric postulates. If you remember, a postulate is a basic truth that is so foundational it doesn't need further explanation or proof. In another way, you could think of these postulates as known basic facts that we all accept to be true. But why is it important to know these postulates? Think about it this way. We live in a time of extreme misinformation. Oh, the lie detector test determined that was a lie. From politicians to news organizations, from your friends and family to internet trolls, we are all sometimes victims and sometimes perpetrators of misinformation. And with all of this misinformation flowing around, it can sometimes be difficult to really understand what's going on, which then makes it difficult to make decisions, come to conclusions or reasonable conclusions, and solve problems. So in this unit, as we work with geometric proofs and seek to prove other geometric ideas, we're trying to get rid of any doubt and find certainty. But that's difficult to do if we don't know what the facts are. And that's where our postulates come in. They give us a foundation of facts and basic truths that help us determine what's really going on with these figures, diagrams, ideas, and situations we're encountering in geometry. So when you do encounter these figures and diagrams in different situations, how do you know how and what to think about them? The postulates, along with other properties and ideas that we'll learn along the way. Ultimately, for the proofs that we encounter in this class, we need facts, and that's what the postulates are giving us. Before watching this video, you should have read over your notes um, and looked at your postulates. If You need to do that so you have a better idea of what's going on. If you haven't done that, go ahead and pause the video and read over your postulates in your notes. All right. So let's take a second to analyze one of these problems that's in your notes, number 13. Number 13 says, which of the following statements, A through E here, cannot be assumed from the diagram here? Okay? Again, this is in your notes. So which of these statements, A through E, cannot be assumed from looking at the diagram that's given to us? Now, we can see, because our notes are already filled out, that B and, B and D cannot be assumed, so we're not going to be able to determine that from this diagram. But let's take each of these line by line to figure out why is that true. Okay? So I'm trying to figure out which of these statements I cannot determine from looking at this diagram. Well, how do I go about doing that? Well, you can keep a couple things in mind. One, what do you see? Okay? What do you see in the diagram? That will give you an idea of what you know and what you don't know. Now, a little bit later, we'll talk about why you can't always go with just what you see or what it looks like. Secondly, keep in mind the postulates and the other known geometric facts um, that we've talked about. Because if we look in here and it matches up with a postulate, then we can maybe assume that. Or if it doesn't match up with a postulate, then maybe we can't assume that. So let's look at each of these lines. A says points A, B, and F are collinear. Do you remember what collinear means? Remember, it means they're all on the same line. Okay? So are A, B, and F all on the same line? Well, if we look at the figure here, here's A, here's B, here's F. And again, if it's difficult to see, you've got your notes in front of you. Okay? So line A B, um, A, B, and F are all on this line right here. Can I assume that from this diagram? Yes, because I see a line going through all of those points, the same line, okay, going through all of those points right here. And so I can assume that they're collinear. But what about points E, B, and D? Are they collinear? Okay. Well, we know we're not going to be able to determine that from this diagram, but let's talk about why. Here's E off here in the corner. Here's B. And here's D. Are they collinear? Well, do you see a line running through all three of those points? No. So this is an example where we can see that there's no line running through them. And so that means they're not collinear. They're not in the same line. We cannot determine it from this diagram because it's not giving us that information. Let's look at C. 
C says line AB is perpendicular to plane S. Okay? So we have line AB right here and plane S here horizontally. Okay? This S is telling me that this is plane S right here. So is AB perpendicular, and that's what this symbol means here, perpendicular, okay? perpendicular to plane S. And if you remember, if two lines or planes are perpendicular, okay, they're forming um, a 90 degree angle at the, at the point where they're perpendicular to each other, okay? or at that point of intersection. So if you look really here, and it'd be really hard to see on the video, but so that's why you want to have your notes in front of you. There's a little like half box here okay, at line AB, okay? that little half box, and it intersects with plane S. If you remember, we've talked about this before, that little half box indicates perpendicular, or indicates a right angle. Okay? So that little half box indicates that there's a right angle there. Um, and so what we see here is this line is forming a right angle with the plane S. And if they're forming a right angle together, that means they're perpendicular to each other. Okay? So the plane S is perpendicular to line AB. And I can tell that because the diagram is showing me there's a right angle there. But if we look at the next one, D is line CD perpendicular to plane T. Okay? CD is right here, okay? this line right here. And plane T is the, the vertical one right here. And so we see the line kind of intersecting with that plane. But what do we not see? Okay? We don't see uh, that little right angle symbol. We don't see that little half box where the line and the plane meet. So even if they were actually perpendicular to each other, we can't tell that from this diagram. So as I said before, there are some things that you can just see, but you can't always just go off with what you think it is. Okay? Just because you think you're seeing it as perpendicular doesn't mean it actually is. You have to go off of what the diagram is showing you and telling you. But because I don't see that little right angle symbol, I cannot say uh, that this is actually perpendicular to each other. Last one, E. Line AF intersects line BC at point B. Line AF intersects line BC at point B. Well, I see the line AF here. I see BC here. Okay? I can see them intersecting um, because I see this point B. Remember, two lines intersect at a point. Okay? That's one of our postulates. That's a known fact. Two lines intersect um, at, that po at one point. Um, and so if they're intersecting at this point B, and B is on both of those lines, okay, um, then that is their point of intersection. Um, and so I can assume that from this graph because I see them, uh, I see this point um, of intersection for these two lines. So I will assume that from this diagram. So again, when you're working with um, diagrams and you want to know what's going on, you want to look at, okay, what do I see? What do I not see? Okay? And does this work with uh, my postulates? Okay? Does this fit with a postulate or does it not fit? Um, with one of our known postulates and facts. Let's look at a couple more examples. Um, so you've got these already filled out in your notes, but let's talk through them uh, a little bit more. So number 15, 14 and 15 um, at the end of that um, lesson 3.1 or section 2.3 uh, in your notes. So for 14 and 15, we're given this diagram here, um, these two lines intersecting. And if we zoom into it and they look at it, we can see that we actually have one line, okay, to correct myself, we have one line and then a segment um, that are intersecting here at point W. And I can also see these two tick marks here indicating that from T to W is congruent from W to V. Okay? So those two parts of the parts of the line, those two segments are congruent to each other. Remember that's what those tick marks mean. Um, so that's just some of the things that I can learn from and assume from uh, this diagram. Let's look at 14. It says, if the given information states that segment PW here and QW are congruent, how can you indicate that on the diagram? Um, so on the diagram, there's nothing telling us that those two are congruent. But in given information, um, further information, uh, we're told that those two segments are congruent. So how could I write that on the diagram? Well, if we use one, if we use the tick marks to 
indicate congruence, we can still use tick marks for congruence, but because we already have one tick mark use, um, used for each of those to indicate those are congruent, if we want to indicate that PW and WQ are congruent, then we're going to use two tick marks. So to indicate that um, these two are congruent to each other, but not congruent to these two, we'll use two tick marks. If we had another, seg another pairing of segments that were congruent, we would use three. Um, and so we just keep adding uh, for the different, um, different pairs that are congruent. Um, so that's how you can state that, state that those two segments on this figure are congruent to each other. And then lastly, number 15, it says name a pair of supplementary angles. Okay. Well, we have to know what supplementary angles are. Okay. Those are angles that their measurements add up to 180 degrees. Well, I don't see any degrees on this diagram, so am I going to have to measure it? Well, no, because I also understand that a linear pair, two angles that um, form a straight line, are supplementary angles. So do I have multiple angles or two angles here that uh, form a straight line? I do. Here and here. Those angles form a straight line. So I could say angles T, well, I'll keep it consistent with what's already in the notes. Angles P, W, V, and angles V, W, Q. Okay? Those are supplementary angles. Okay? PWV right here, and VWQ right here. Okay. Or we could also say that there, you know, there are other angles, other options um, of what's con, um, supplementary. Um, we could say PWT and angle TWQ. PWT right here, and TWQ right here. Right, these two angles because they're forming that straight line together. Okay. Um, and so the reason that we know that these are supplementary angles is because they form a linear pair or a straight line. So those, um, those pairs of angles, and there's multiple, right? I think there's others on the note page that you have as well. Um, that we can see there, right? Because there's multiple pairings here and here, here and here, here and here, and here and here, all the way around. And there's pairings that are supplementary to each other. Um, and so we can identify those uh, angles as supplementary if we know what supplementary means and if we know that a linear pair is supplementary. Um, so you can see how, again, we're having to understand a lot of definitions, a lot of postulates, facts, um, in order to help us understand what's going on in these, uh, with these different diagrams and problems.